Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 247 DIY. Today we're tackling a home improvement project that's going to center around sorting out the problems that resulted from a leaking wax ring from this toilet here. So stick around. Alright, so today's project is actually going to be centered around three different parts. The primary part is going to be addressing the leaking wax ring here on this toilet. Uh, apparently it's a leak that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, we just didn't notice it. It was a very slow leak. Uh, in a minute, we'll take you downstairs. I'll show you the downstairs bathroom and show you how we ended up figuring out that there was a leak going on with this wax ring. The second being that this toilet is a bit outdated. Um, talked it over with the wife and we both agreed that uh, we want to get a new toilet in here. So we're going to be installing a brand new toilet. And then downstairs, we're going to have to get a little creative with the subfloor. Uh, there is just a little bit of moisture issue going on with a small portion of the subfloor. And in order to get this toilet flange secured nicely, uh, like I said, we're just going to have to get a little creative. So the first thing that we need to do, even before I go to the parts store, is I need to get this toilet out. I need to know what we're working with in order to figure out exactly what I need to buy. Um, I don't know the height of this toilet flange, whether it sits below the level of the tile here in the bathroom, whether it sits flush, or whether the flange is actually on top of the tile, and I need to figure that out specifically just to determine if I need to go with a different wax ring than what's going to be provided with the new toilet that's going in here. We're also going to be adding some material underneath the subfloor, like I just mentioned, and so I'm going to need longer screws to go through the toilet flange and secure it to the subfloor. And so I need to know what length screws are in there now so that I can go longer to go in the new material we're gonna add underneath the subfloor. But we won't know any of that until we go ahead and get this toilet removed. But before we jump right into that, let me bring it downstairs. Um, I'll show you exactly what transpired um, and led us to figure out that this did in fact have a slow leak around the wax ring on this toilet. All right, here we are down here in the downstairs bathroom. This is directly above the toilet in the downstairs bathroom. And this leak actually is sort of a little bit of a happy accident, I guess you could say. This bathroom, no matter how much you cleaned it, when it got real humid in the summertime, it would just have this lingering smell of mildew. No matter how much you clean this bathroom, um, it would just smell like mildew when it was very, very humid out. And now having discovered the leak, this is exactly where the smell was coming from. And we didn't really notice. Um, I came downstairs one morning and the little mat that we have in front of the sink was soaking wet, but there was really no other water in the bathroom. There was no standing water on the floor. Um, I didn't actually look up. I was just looking at the floor. I thought it was the toilet down here might have been leaking. Um, it wasn't my wife till later on actually looked up and noticed the staining on the ceiling and a few little water droplets um, on the ceiling here. Having come in, realizing now that I had a leak, we cut this section of the ceiling out, and lo and behold, you can see the green here on the copper from the water that has been running down and dripping off of the pipe, and the little bit of water damage here around the subfloor. And when I pulled this section of the ceiling out, the top side of it is just completely covered in mildew. Um, when this project is done, unfortunately, what we're going to have to do is tear out this whole ceiling. Uh, the moisture honestly has soaked into all of this drywall. It's been a couple days since I cut this out and I don't think it's showing up on camera. Uh, but where the edge of this drywall where I cut into should normally be like a grayish white. It's very, very dark, dark gray, almost like a, it looks like clay right now because it's so soaked with water. So luckily this is just a bathroom it's a pretty small bathroom so all i'm going to have to do is just cut out all the ceiling in here and then i'll probably just replace it with um, two new pieces of drywall up in here so in a way it's good that it kind of happened um, now before we remodel this bathroom um, and now we know where this mildew smell is coming from so now that i've shown you that and the leak that resulted from the leaking wax ring around the toilet let's go ahead and jump upstairs and we'll jump into getting this toilet removed uh, so we can look at the toilet flange and figure out everything we're going to need when we run to the hardware store. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and shut off the water supply. Nine times out of ten it's going to be on the left side of the toilet here. You can kind of see it sticking out underneath there. We need to go ahead and shut that water supply off. And we're just going to go ahead and turn this shut off valve clockwise. And sometimes shut off valves, if they haven't been turned in a long time, it can be kind of difficult to turn. So I'm just going to use my crescent wrench here to be able to turn this all the way. All right, so one of those things that's just part of only an older home and things that happen sometimes when you're trying to fix stuff. 
this shutoff valve for whatever reason isn't cooperating it's just spinning and it's not tightening down so the shutoff valve is probably shot so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go downstairs in the basement find the cold water line that supplies this we'll shut it off down in the basement and then we can keep moving on from there all right so now that the water shut off what we want to do is we want to get this tank empty now I've already done this because I just wanted to make sure that I had gotten the right water supply line when I went down and shut that off down in the basement but you're just going to flush your toilet and you're going to make sure you hold the handle that way you can get as much water out of the bottom if you don't that flapper is going to close early and you're going to have more water to get out of the bottom once all that water is drained out by holding the flush down we need to go ahead and get the rest of the water out of the tank because there still will be a little bit left in the bottom easiest way to do that get a big sponge and a bucket and just soak that water up, squeeze it out in the bucket. There's only maybe about a half an inch in the bottom. Um, it'll take you a few times to get the sponge in there and bring it back out, but getting all that water out of there is gonna eliminate a little bit of weight and make things a little bit less messy when we actually have to lift this toilet up off the floor. Now the next thing I'm gonna do just to make my life a little bit easier is I'm gonna remove the toilet seat. You don't necessarily have to do it, um, it's just going to kind of be in the way a little bit for what we're doing next. So just to make life easier, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. And next we want to go ahead and get the water out of the bowl. Sometimes it can be as easy as just using a plunger to get that water out of there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll use our same sponge method just to get the remaining water out of there that won't come out with using the plunger. And now we're ready to go ahead and remove the two closet bolts that actually hold the toilet down to the drain flange. And on top of your closet bolts, you're just going to have a plastic cap. Sometimes they can be difficult to get up. Obviously you want to be gentle if you're planning on reusing the toilet, you don't want to chip. Like I said, we're replacing this toilet, so I'm not exactly being that gentle. But that cap will come off. And then we can go ahead and use our crescent wrench and loosen that bolt off of there. We'll go ahead and repeat that exact same thing on the other side of the toilet. One last thing we need to do before we are ready to go ahead and remove this toilet is we need to disconnect that supply line off the bottom of the tank. It's usually just a fitting that you can undo by hand that goes up underneath the bottom side of the tank. There will be a little bit of water that comes out of that, so just have some rags on hand to soak it up. And now we're ready to go ahead and remove this toilet, get it up off the floor. Before you do that, you want to have a couple things on hand. If the location you're moving the toilet to, once you lift it up off the floor is carpeted, or it's a nice hardwood floor, or just generally a flooring that you don't want to get all of the wax from the wax ring that's going to be on the bottom of the toilet, get yourself a thick piece of cardboard or a piece of plywood outside of the bathroom that you're working on that you can set the toilet on and not have to worry about getting that wax all over the place. The other thing you're going to want is a relatively large rag or several small rags that we're going to stuff down into the drain pipe. Remember that the way the toilet is designed there's always water in a loop in the back side of the toilet and what that does is it creates a barrier so sewer gases can't come up. So once you remove this toilet up off the drain sewer gases can now freely come up so we're just gonna take those rags, we're gonna stuff them down in the drain hole once the toilet's removed to prevent that. And now that's done, all we're gonna do is we're gonna get above the toilet, we're gonna grab it from underneath, right behind where the toilet seat bolts into the bowl, and we're simply gonna kind of wiggle it around and we're just gonna lift it straight up and off of those closet bolts. Alright, so here's that wax ring we were talking about. And one thing that I'm seeing, and keep in mind, I'm not a professional. I haven't installed and removed a million different toilets. But this doesn't look to me what normally the wax ring looks like when you remove a toilet. It's very, very dark and brown. I think that's a little bit of just kind of mold going on. But the important thing to see here is none of this stuck to the bottom of the toilet. 
at the bottom of the toe is actually completely clean of wax and this is actually kind of shiny all up along the top of here and what that means is it didn't seal to the bottom of the toilet it didn't stick to the bottom of the toilet and so what i can only assume is that because that wasn't sealed you know as you were flushing the toilet i know it sounds kind of gross but as you're every time you flush the toilet a little bit of water was escaping around the seal and then there's a rough cut opening in the bottom of the floor for the drain pipe and the flange and the water just flows down and it flows down around that pipe and that's what damaged that ceiling down below here. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and remove this wax ring and rubber horn out of here. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've cleaned up this flange here. One thing I am noticing right off the bat, this doesn't look like it was the greatest install in the world. I mean, again, I'm not a professional. Maybe this doesn't need to be super perfect, but um, you can see these washers. They put a few washers on a couple of these bolts because the heads were too small, and I can wiggle these bolts. There's like almost a quarter inch of room there between the top of the head of the bolt and these washers. Um, but what we do need to do is we're going to go ahead and remove one of these screws. I need to know how long they are because we're going to add some material underneath of this water damaged subfloor so that the new screws that we use will go through the bad subfloor and then into um, some wood spacing that I'm going to put underneath so that this has a solid bite. It's not something that's going to make or break plumbing, um, especially with this older style plumbing. This is, like I said, it's like a 60 year old house. All of the piping in this house is solid copper piping. Um, and then this flange most likely here is brass, which makes it very rigid, even with all these screws kind of loose. Like I can push on this and that pipe, that flange barely even moves at all. But like I said, I need to remove one of these so that we can see how long they are. So, um, this is an exact reason as to why it is very important um, to use stainless steel hardware when you put these flanges down. If you use regular hardware, even a toilet that's not leaking in terms of like the leak that we saw here, you will get condensation and sweating in like the humid time in the summer. Um, and these screws here at one point were the same length, but you can see that that broke off. Uh, which means I'm going to have to probably try to drill that out if I'm going to reuse these holes here um, when we get our new hardware. But we're definitely going to be grabbing stainless steel hardware when we're at the store. With those screws out of there, we can go ahead and just give the top of the flange here a final cleaning. And then we'll run to the store. We'll get everything we'll need. Probably go ahead and pick up uh, another shutoff valve here for this supply line. All right, and my microphone came unplugged, so we'll just be doing a little voiceover here. Uh, but you can see I took some scrap, um, I believe this was three quarter inch thick plywood that I had um, laying around from various projects, um, cut it to the size that I had pre-measured, um, used a, I believe a six inch hole saw to cut a hole in the middle and then just cut that in half so that I could fit it over top of the pipe. You can see here I'm fitting one side in and it's important to note that I used hardware that wasn't going to go all the way through the subfloor because you don't want those screws to go up and hit the tile and essentially buckle or damage the tile. This is just temporarily holding these in place so that when the large stainless steel screws for the flange come down from the top, um, this wood is in place. Um, if you had a helper, I suppose you could have somebody down here and hold them up, um, but this is just as easy just to secure these there. Um, and then, like I said, the screws will come down from the top and bite into um, this good solid wood here underneath and then went ahead and fitted the other side in. Probably didn't necessarily have to go that wide with it. Um, I just pre-measured the width, um, the span between the joists here, so that's why um, I went with that size. Completely arbitrary. All right, before we go ahead and start putting these screws in the top of the flange here, let's go ahead and just change out this supply shutoff valve for the toilet. Get the old Teflon tape off of there.
and that should allow us to get it tight without having to over tighten it. So now we can go ahead and install our new screws down in here. The existing ones were two inches, those, that's the length of the ones we pulled out. We've gone ahead and picked up these three inch number 10 stainless steel decking screws. And I did pick up washers to go with these, but we're not gonna need them. Uh, the countersunk portions in this flange is gonna be perfect for the head of this number 10 screw. And again, you just want these snug. You did see the flange sink down just a little bit there. Um, you don't want to drive these all the way down and get them as tight as you possibly can because you risk damaging the pipe if it moves too much. So we just want these down nice and snug and bit strongly into the subfloor below. And I think four is going to be perfectly fine. The previous flange did have two here, uh, but since these aren't countersunk, I'm not going to bother using these ones. Four seems like it's going to be just enough. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install the closet bolts. These will come with the toilet. Basically, they're just keyed bolts. You can see how the head there is elongated. They fit into the opening here, and then you turn them sideways and slide them into place. Now, one tip you can do if you want to is some people will take a nut and get it on here, thread it down so that it secures it to the flange and then you can set your toilet on top. It's not entirely necessary, but if you really want to, you could do that. We've got a whole bunch of extra wax down here inside of the grooves here for these bolts and it's gonna hold them in nicely, so I'm not gonna bother. Get them roughly centered up side to side. Then we can go ahead and place our wax ring. Now, there seems to be kind of two generally accepted ways you can do this. The instructions with the toilet say to place the wax ring on the toilet and then set it down in place. Um, most of what I'm seeing is people placing the wax ring on the flange first and setting the toilet down. That's what I'm going to go with. Just go ahead and use whatever method you're more comfortable with. And as long as we're on the topic of wax rings, I actually bought this wax ring um, when I was at the hardware store because it has the plastic horn here in the center. Again, I'm not a professional that's installed tons and tons of toilets, but from what I'm reading, these ones with the plastic horns are better because I assumed the toilet was just going to come with a standard um, non-horned wax ring, but it actually came with a horned wax ring. So that's good. I'm going to use the one that came with the toilet because it actually is a little bit thicker than the one I had bought, and that's going to make sure we get a nice good seal when the toilet presses down on this flange. And also one thing to note, if your flange is flush with the floor surface like this one is, or set just on top of the, flo the floor surface, you should be fine with one wax ring. If your flange is significantly below the surface of the floor, typically the tried and true practice is to use two wax rings. Um, I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, but I believe it's just the regular wax ring on the bottom and then the horn ring on top. I could be wrong on that. It could be opposite the horn ring on the bottom with the regular wax ring on top. Do some Googling and you can probably figure out exactly how that's supposed to go if your scenario has a flange that's below the floor surface. But ours isn't. It's nice and flush. If anything, it's about a, an eighth of an inch above. It's a little bit higher here on this side and this side, but that shouldn't be a problem at all. We'll go ahead and we'll pull our rag out of here and we will place our wax ring over the opening of the flange. Then we'll take our toilet base, we're going to lift it up straight up over top of these bolts, line the bolts up, and then set it down in place. And then we want to squish that wax ring. It's important to remember not to rock the toilet forward back side to side. You want to use just a gentle twisting motion to squish that wax ring down until the toilet is sitting nicely on the floor. Then we can go ahead and we'll get our hardware on and we'll tighten this down to the floor. So now we need to get our hardware here on the bolts. 
First, we're gonna put on one of these plastic discs. If you can see, there's a little lip on it. That lip needs to face up because your decorative cover that goes over these bolts is gonna snap onto there. Then on top of that, we're gonna place a washer. And then we can thread our nut on. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts down. And it's important to remember, we're not trying to go super, super tight here with these. Uh, what you don't wanna do is go so tight that you either crack the porcelain or potentially break the flange that's up underneath this toilet. Um, having a brass flange underneath this toilet like I had, it's pretty unlikely that you would go tight enough to break that flange. But modern piping uses PVC flanges and those can be pretty easy to snap if you over tighten these. All you're doing is securing the toilet down to the floor so that it won't move. It doesn't have to be super crazy tight. And just make sure you go side to side instead of just tightening one side down all at once. Tightening it excessively in an uneven way can crack the portion of the toilet. And just double check, make sure we don't have any rocking of the toilet. Sometimes what can happen is if you do get a little rocking of the toilet, you may have to use shims um, to level the toilet. But this is setting nicely on the tile floor. There's no rocking. Now what we're going to need to do is we need to cut the tops off of these bolts. The bolts come in kind of a standard length uh, because not every flange is going to be the same distance. And so these caps won't fit on there because it's going to be too tall. So we're just going to take a hacksaw and we're gonna cut it. You don't actually have to go all the way through, about halfway or like two thirds, and then you can just kind of bend it and snap it off by hand. Just be very careful with your hacksaw that you don't nick or damage any of this porcelain. Basically, we're just gonna get in there like that and we're gonna cut it. Uh, this is a pretty tight angle and I can't really get my tripod in there and cut at the same time, so I'll come back after we've uh, got this cut. All right, so we've put enough of a relief cut in there now where we should just be able to snap that off. Once that's off of there, clean up the shavings and then pop our cap on. And we'll do that to the other side and then we can move on to installing the tank. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install our tank. On the bottom here, you can see this black rubber gasket. I've already installed that. That's not gonna come installed, so you need to put that on the threaded portion that comes out of the bottom of the toilet. And we're just going to set it right in place with the big hole there on the top of the back of the toilet. So this particular toilet uses three bolts to hold the tank down to the bowl. These are the style bolts. The rubber head goes inside the tank facing down and then from underneath, you thread on these plastic nuts here. These are really meant to be hand tightened. These are like hand tightened style wing nuts. No tool is really needed for this. And once you have them tightened down snug, what you can do because there's one in the back and two in the front is if this needs to kind of tilt or level itself in any particular direction, you can tighten that one down a little bit more, squeeze that rubber gasket and get this set nice and level in the orientation you want. So now we need to go ahead and get our new supply line attached to the toilet. Generally, you know, if you're doing a dishwasher or a clothes washing machine or a toilet or a sink, anything that has these supply lines, it's generally just a good rule of thumb to get a new one when you do the install. These things get replaced and changed out so infrequently that it's just good insurance to have a brand new supply line installed when you're doing the project. And just the opposite of the way we took this apart, we'll put it back together. This is a pretty universal fitting. It's gonna fit almost every toilet when you get it from the hardware store. That's gonna be right up underneath here on the tank. And then you have your 3 8 inch fitting that goes on the top. There's no need for Teflon tape there because if you can see inside the end there, there's a little black rubber compression ring inside of there and that's what's gonna give you your seal.
and we'll leave that valve in the closed position. I'll head downstairs. We'll turn the water on downstairs before we come up and open that valve and then we'll verify for leaks. All right, so now we should be able to turn the valve on and this should start filling up on its own. One thing I will just talk about, if you can hear me over the sound of the toilet bowl here filling, this particular toilet, I'm not 100% sure how happy I'm going to be with. The problem is, it seems like these days, chair height toilets seem to be the standard. I would say 95% of what was available for me just to pick up today in stock from my local Lowe's um, was chair height toilets. And we didn't want a chair height toilet, we wanted a standard size toilet here. Um, and in a standard size toilet, they only had two options available today at Lowe's. One was an elongated bowl toilet and one was a round bowl, which we wanted. This is a relatively small bathroom, so the round bowl was going to be perfect. Uh, but reading the reviews, they did say that um, this toilet can have a little bit of a weak flush and that the tank fills relatively slowly. Just now standing here, I can confirm that the tank does fill relatively slowly. From what I've seen this particular toilet, there's a little trick involved. There's a little restrictor in the water. You can take that restrictor out and the bowl will fill faster. Um, it's not the end of the world. It fills about the same as the toilets downstairs. That's an older toilet. Um, and then the other toilet and the other side of the bathroom up here in this upstairs bathroom um, is one that fills pretty quickly. So I could do that. That being said, this bathroom is pretty outdated. It's not slated for anything soon, but we are going to be remodeling this bathroom. This toilet was only about 100 bucks. So for 100 bucks, just to get us through right now until we decide to remodel the bathroom down the road, uh, this will do just fine. And we can go ahead and give it a test flush. And now generally it's just good practice. Before we go ahead and finish and finalize everything up, we want to let the toilet sit with the water in it, I don't know, 20-30 minutes. Come back, we're going to check all around the base of the toilet. I'll go downstairs, we'll look around the drain pipe under, from underneath, which is nice that we have access to see that with the ceiling being cut out. And we'll check all the seal points here on the tank, and we'll just verify that nothing's leaking. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and get the toilet seat installed. And after reading a lot of the reviews about this toilet ahead of time, I'm not going to use the seat that came with this toilet. A lot of people complain that it's not a very good seat. It's not very good, very comfortable. So what I've gone with is I spent the extra money and I picked up this Kohler soft close lid. That's what we're going to be throwing on here. Installation of the toilet seat is really simple. These plastic bolts go down from the top. These plastic nuts go up from the bottom. The little tab on there is so that as you're tightening, it will touch the side of the toilet and then this nut will stay in place while you tighten the top of the bolt without having to get a wrench or anything on this nut. And you could use a socket if you wanted to because there is a hex head, but we're just going to use a standard flathead screwdriver. I also prefer this style lid because the little covers that go over the hardware to secure it down, once they're snapped shut, um, they're pretty flush with where it meets the toilet. There's not like a big lip on it or anything like that. It makes cleaning the toilet a lot easier than a lot of other toilet seat options. And the soft close function is pretty nice too. And that's about it for this toilet. We're gonna to throw the cover on the back of the tank here. And then after we do our leak check and we come back, I'm gonna run some white silicone. You could use clear if you wanted. I'm just gonna use white to match the toilet around the base of the toilet. And just make sure when you're doing your caulking, you're gonna run it along the sides, the front, all the way around the side, but leave the back of the toilet open. Uh, leaving the back is important because if there ever were to be a hairline crack or something damaged inside the toilet or a wax ring, a really bad wax ring failure, you're going to notice that water pooling behind the toilet and hopefully you can catch it before significant damage happens. I'm not going to do that today. I won't film that. I'm just going to come back probably tomorrow after I clean up a little bit here. So that's going to wrap this project up. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. As you can see, it's not that difficult of a project. This is something that anybody can do themselves. 
There are a lot of steps involved. It can be a little time consuming, but as far as difficulty, it's not that hard of a job. You can save yourself a little bit of money instead of having to call a contractor or a handyman. And so as far as the remainder of this project, all that's gonna leave me with is cutting out the remainder of the ceiling in the downstairs bathroom and getting some new fresh sheetrock put up in the ceiling. So as always guys, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing and don't forget to check us out on Instagram. Thanks. Mm -hmm.